Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me. My name is Matt. I'm uh, reporting from Amazie IO. I'm the recruitment manager here and today we're going to be talking about working in a globally remote team. And for the next 15 minutes we'll have a Q&A at the end but don't feel you need to save your questions till then. We've got a live chat going so pop it in there and we're moderating. So today we're going to go through some introductions. Um, why we at Amazie IO believe in remote as a topic challenges that come with remote um, and how we make it work for us and also hiring for remote. Of course, recently over the last year, remote has become a lot more of a topic. Some companies have had to react. Some companies have done it well, others not so much. We have our own way of doing it. So we're going to talk a little bit about what works for us and maybe it inspires some ideas. So uh, some introductions first. Myself, I'm the recruitment manager at Amazie Group and I'm based out of Zurich, but I'm from England originally. Um, been with Amazie since November 19. And for the past six years of my life, I've been in tech recruitment for my sins. I'm pretty new to remote work myself, um, having started when I joined Amazie. Um, and we are an open source hosting provider with 34 plus employees from Auckland to Austin and everywhere in between. And we are 100% remote as well. Oops, there we go. Okay, so um, why we believe in remote? So there's a few obvious benefits to remote work. Um, we have um, employee benefits and employer benefits. So let's talk about the employee benefits first. Um, the employee benefits are, of course, it's easier to maintain a work-life balance. You um, are able to deal with life's little happenings. You're able to be at home. You're spending more time with your family. You're able to cook at home. It's just easier for them. Um, it's more efficient. There's no more commuting, which of course makes it less expensive and healthier as well. You're not spending so much time in traffic. Um, you're also able to say to make healthy lunches rather than go and get that quick burger at lunch from the office. But most importantly, we feel that the main benefit is an inherent feeling of trust. If we trust our employees to work remotely, globally, um, we can't micromanage, which we're going to go on when somebody works fully remotely, uh, and we have no desire to. So I think that it's a really good starting point to develop that feeling of trust between an employer and employee to say, we trust you to work remotely. From an employer benefit, it's even more obvious. I mean, we've got access to global talent, not just the local office location. Very often in a normal traditional setup, you'd have, say we have our Zurich office, we would be limited to looking around Switzerland, really, maybe even more locally to Zurich Canton um, for, for, what, for, for talent, for our office location. By being fully distributed, we can pick people around the world that we want to join us. So it's a really good thing from an employer point of view. Um, being an MSP ourselves, and um, it also helps us cover multiple time zones as well. By having a team in New Zealand, Australia, North America, Europe remotely, we are much able, much more easily able to cover those multiple time zones. Um, of course, lower infrastructure costs, office space, that goes without saying, um, and also happier and less stressed employees, which go back to the employee benefit, usually means that we keep these employees longer. Um, they're happier, they bring forward more ideas, they're more inventive. So that's important too. And finally, probably the most important point, it encourages diversity organically. By in recruiting people from all over the world, we're able to bring in multiple cultures, multiple backgrounds, different mindsets, very organically, which it just makes us stronger and it makes us more innovative. So for us, it's a no brainer. Of course, it doesn't work for every company. Um, and there are challenges associated with remote work as well. It's not plug and play. So you can't just expect, and a lot of companies have been in this situation, um, but you can't just expect to be in a position where you're forced to go remote overnight and that it's just going to work. You need the right tools in place. You need to change of mindset as well, we found. Communication is, subtle differences in communication are very important. For example, when you're in an office and you're sat next to an employee, you can have that conversation and no one else is really bothered by it. We have Slack channels and they're usually very busy. Um, one thing we have to remind our workers, we have a hybrid environment in some of our business units at Amazie Group. One thing we have to remind our office workers is, you know, when the Slack channels get noisy, that's actually just them talking to their colleague next door. It's just they're happy to do it over Slack because they're remote. So it does require a change of attitude of communication. Um, also the right tools. So we use Slack and Zoom, for example, and, and many other remote tools, that's important too. Um, and admin concerns. When you hire globally, um, every country has a different legislation, there's different market expectations, and that's something you have to take into account as well. And you just have to accept that you have less oversight of employees in their daily work. So that's where the inherent trust comes in too. Whoops, how we make it work for us. So as I said, forget micromanagement. That's really important. It's not possible with remote work. Um, one of the main issues I've had speaking to, or I've seen speaking to other companies that have been forced to go remote is that, that part of the mindset hasn't changed. Like, how do we look, look at what everyone's doing the whole time? 
if the short answer is you don't, you just have to trust them and accept that. Open, clear and public communication, really important. Everybody needs to be told what to do on, uh, everyone told what's happening, sorry, on Slack or in Zoom, it needs to be out there. You can't get everybody together in an office and talk about things in a boardroom when you're a remote team. We use Slack very often for discussions and for public communication and that works well. So everybody gets the message at the same time and the same message. Uh, where possible, we try and remove any distinction um, or any company that has a hybrid environment to try and remove any distinction between remote workers, office workers, freelance workers, employees. Very often, if you don't have an entity in a country and you want to hire somebody remotely there, you would have to employ them as a full-time freelancer with an unlimited contract. If that's the case, we don't want to distinguish between them as much as we can um, between them and an employee. So they get the same employee benefits and what have you, the same holiday allowance, the same flexi time allowance, but we also have to accept when that's not possible to. So one of the things that companies do is they often try and sync everything up. That's just not feasible. So you wouldn't, for example, if you have an office in Germany, you couldn't necessarily um, have German level of maternity leave for every other person all around the world. It might be uh, completely unfeasible financially, for example. So there are some exceptions you have to make and accept that too. In terms of teamwork, it's really important to, put, to supply right tools for the job. So Slack, Zoom, we use Donut to help with spontaneous connections and what have you, but that's very important. The tools that you need for remote work are not the same as they are in office work. Um, equally, G Drive, for example, we use G Drive very heavily because if you have paper, um, that people can't sign it when they're halfway across the world, it's all digital signatures. So we need to keep everything paperless as well. We try and keep in constant contact. So twice daily standards we recommend between our different business units for handovers of work. Um, we encourage more than just work chats on Slack and Zoom. We set up virtual events, virtual quizzes, Halloween night, for example. And we try and do as much of that as possible too. And when possible, we also try and arrange a meetup. The most important thing though is to give everyone a voice. It's very easy for workers to feel isolated when they are working remotely, especially if they're not in the same country as the rest of their colleagues. Um, we want to make sure that nobody feels isolated, that everybody feels no matter where they are or how distant their nearest colleague is, they're able to voice their feelings and opinions and they feel listened to as well. That's, that's very important to stop that isolated feeling in our experience. Uh, here's some examples, um, some dubious pictures there. I don't think I'm in any of them, thank goodness, but um, some examples of our remote stuff there. Um, okay, hiring for remote. Hiring for remote is a, um, there's a lot of considerations to take into account. Uh, so considerations for hiring, I would say is be fair. Firstly, if you have a remote employee that's the other side of the world, or you have another person in that process that happens to live 10 minutes down the road from you, then you want to have the same process. You don't want to meet up with the person that's down the road in person and the person across the other side of the world remotely. You wanna have a fair process independent of location. Um, contractual setups and location requirements. This requires a lot of thought. So um, if you don't have an entity in the country, do you have to employ them as freelancers? What's the policy when it comes to on-call work for engineers? Do you have to pay them extra on weekends or in evenings or for night work? That varies across the whole world and across even different states in some countries as well. So it's something that you definitely need to consider to remain compliant. Uh, mindset is, I would say, more of an important value to think of than it would even be for, say, an office worker. When you're remote, as I say, you can't look at what someone's doing and they know that too. So you need somebody that's honest and open, is able to say when they need support, that is self-disciplined to go forward with their work in their own time at their own pace, but to go forward with it. And integrity, if you're isolated and they're not saying what the problems are, there could be a lot of things that, negative things that are happening to them that we're just not aware about. And we need to have that feeling that we trust each other. So that mutual trust is also super important for remote work we found. And it's something that we definitely put more of a focus on now. Uh, and less geographical focus. So we tend to um, not really mind where somebody is in the world. We tend to care about the time zones to make sure the time zones covered. So um, for example, the UK, South Africa, Switzerland, they all have very similar time zones. So for us, that's, that's important. It's not important which one of those three places they're in. Uh, on onboarding, it's important that um, when you have a remote worker, especially if it's somebody that isn't used to remote, and I think there's a lot of us at the moment that are not used to remote, then you want to have clear information from the start before they start in the terms of their expectations. For example, we send an onboarding document and a first steps document detailing their first week of meetings, who their buddy is, what their body responsibilities are, that sort of thing. You want to give them as much good information as possible 
um, so that they're aware, so they're not just sat in their um, home office on their first day wondering what to do without any instruction and have everything ready to go from day one. So deliver the tech, the swag, the meetings, access granted to systems, the usual stuff. We should do that for any worker though, ideally. Um, we also try and spend the first week on integration for onboarding and familiarity and team collaboration. Super important to collaborate as a remote team to communicate. So we want to instill that in people from the very start. We try not to put them on any work-related tasks in the first week and instead just try and get them onboarded, familiar with our style, our communication style and what it means to, to work remotely for Amazi IO. And, and then we welcome them via the Slack channel, stand up and monthly meetings and with a slide dedicated to them at the monthly meetings so that everybody's fully aware of this new, new person. When it's a remote worker, you don't have the benefit of being able to um, see the new person in the office and wonder who they are. So uh, that's something that we try and communicate pretty clearly as well. So we're all aware who is who as a team. We're quite a small team. Um, so it's not that difficult, but as we grow, something we need to keep an eye on. Okay. And finally, before the Q&A, how we maintain it. So the world is changing a lot with remote work. And I think that there's going to be a lot of improvements in our ability to work remotely as a whole industry. Um, we're going to set remote enablement tools and also companies, I think, are becoming more aware of the benefits of remote. Um, so we need to constantly reflect, look at what our competitors, look at what the market's doing, making sure that we've always got our finger on the pulse. We haven't got everything right, but it works for us at the moment. It could be better in the future. So we want to make sure we're always looking at that. Again, continually hiring the right mindset. And we listen to the employees. What does they work remotely? Um, so what does it mean to them to work remote? What could really help them? How are they feeling? And we listen to the market because some businesses do it differently to us and we can learn from them too. Into the future, COVID of course, it's gonna have a big impact. It's had a whole big impact on the year. Um, it's gonna create a bigger market for remote enablement tools. So we suspect that the experience of remote is gonna get better because of this. Um, it's also forced many of us to experience remote work for the first time. Um, we want more of it. So I think that the desire in the market is going to lean more towards remote as well. More companies are gonna offer it because I think they're going to see over time that they might not be able to get the talent in if they don't offer it anymore. Um, but the flip side of that for both candidates, employers, employees, is that with this wider experience um, with remote work, it's going to be really hard for, if a lot of companies start arranging, it's going to be very hard for employees to define who does it well and who just does it. And I think that's same with employers as well. Now that of previously it was a case of some people work remotely, now it's just the way it is mostly. And so for employees, it's going to be difficult to determine who works really well remotely and who just has worked remotely in the past as well, but who's really a remote worker with the right mindset. And that's we're going to face challenges with that. Um, but that's what I suspect for the future. And that is it. And we're ready for the q and I think we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, so let's have a look if there's any Q&As. Here's my contact details if you want to get hold of me. And oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, locate the session at DrupalCon. So if, are there any questions I wonder? Let's have a quick look in the chat. No, there are no questions. Well, I guess I answered them all really well without realizing. <laughs> so that's great. Stop by the booth if you with amazing. Um, Maisie Io, stop by the booth and also uh, send me any messages if you feel that you've got any questions. Feel free to send me an email if you're interested to hear more or contact with me on LinkedIn or Twitter us, as I say, or stop by the booth. And with that, I wish you all a lovely day. And thanks very much for your time, everyone. Oh, hang on. No, we have a question. Where's the question? Sorry, I've got to get rid of my screen. Can I tell you more about the onboarding document? Yes, I can. So the onboarding document is something that we've put together to um, describe what it looks like to work for Amazi IA, but also um, the different procedures. So how we track time, a leave allowance, um, benefits, what our expectations are, what our values are, um, the different systems, basically everything we could want um, for a new person to know. It's not meant to be there for to be read all in one go. It's more as a reference book. So if people have certain questions about um, how uh, certain things work or how they need to claim for expenses, it's all gonna be there. Mostly it's online now as well. Um, okay, Francisco, what tools do you provide to help someone settle up on remote work? So Donut's really good. Donut's very good to start spontaneous conversations. Um, generally speaking, Slack and Zoom do it for us. It's a question of how you use them. So we would try and set people up with the 
um, their meetings set up. We're trying to set them up with meetings with the wider team, with stand-up meetings and with Slack and Donut. And if we set up the right meetings with the right team, with the right intentions, then generally speaking, that works for us. I would say going forward, we need to look at what other tools are there. There's um, a couple that are coming out on the market to help with remote isolation, which we're looking at at the moment. Um, that's going to be a bigger topic going forward, depending on how long COVID goes on for. So that's something we're really keen on. Any more questions at all? Then I think we're good. All right. Thanks very much for your time, everyone. And I wish you a lovely day. Cheers.